Hello friends. Recently, one of my friends forwarded me a video of a highly privileged kid talking about protests in India and how the history of protests is not taught to young people of India in today's time. The name of this privileged kid is Mr. Raghu Karnad. That's right, you got the surname right. He is the son of Mr. Girish Karnad, the playwright, the actor, and the entertainer and by the end of watching Mr. Raghu Karnad's video you will realize that irony died on the footsteps of Mr. Arvind Kejriwal's house while doing a dharna. Now Mr. Raghu Karnad's video is ostensibly titled Remembering Emergency and the Student Protests the BJP doesn't talk about. The video is available on YouTube and I will not do him the honor of providing the links to the video. But quite obviously, once the video was posted, the Ramachandra Guhas of the world began to praise it as illuminative and educative and who and her and the rest of the nice adjectives. So, let's teach this privileged kid Mr. Raghu Karnad some lessons by using his own video. But before we begin, it is essential to say a few words about Mr. Raghu Karnat's background given how these guys are increasingly relying on social media and WhatsApp to brainwash the millennial generation of wealthy, well-heeled, urban coffee shop illiterates. Raghu Karnad is one of the founders of a far-left online media shop named The Wire, whose naked agenda has been highly visible for nearly three years. The Wire specializes in rabid Hindu baiting and publishing fake and vicious pieces attacking Prime Minister Narendra Modi, BJP President Amit Shah, the BJP as a party itself, the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh, and anybody remotely sympathetic to Hindu causes. Mr. Raghu Karnad's video is just another recent exhibit of the typical arrogance that characterizes such media people. This is an arrogance rooted in absolute appalling and irreversible ignorance. Let's make no mistake, this video by Raghu Karnad is among others it is simply the battle cry issued by outlets like The Wire and similar media Kirana shops ahead of the 2019 general elections. But then, on the positive side, it is good that Raghu Karnad made the video because it shows two things very clearly. Number one, that he knows zero history of post-independence India. Number two, that he is a completely brainwashed grown-up child with plenty of idle time on his hands. With that, let me begin. But then, Raghu Karnad's video, and I watched it at least five or six times. The video is so incoherent, it's hazy, and it's so bizarre that one doesn't know from where to begin to puncture it. So let's take this step by step. Apparently, according to Raghu Karnad, the current BJP government at the center doesn't want young people to learn the history of protests in India since we attained independence. Mr. Arun Jaitley, Narendra Modi and other BJP leaders, according to Raghu Karnad, have become exactly like Indira Gandhi who imposed the emergency against which all these leaders fought. And three, Mr. Jayaprakash Narayan or JP was supported by the ABVP, the RSS and the Janasang during his fight against Mrs. Gandhi's tyranny. Right. So Mr. Raghu Karnad, guess who else also supported JP? His name is Lalu Prasad Yadav, the former chief minister and current uh, jailbird of Bihar. Perhaps Mr. Lalu Yadav can offer some coaching to Mr. Raghu Karnad and his team on the history of doing protests. After all, Mr. Lalu Yadav has got plenty of free time in jail 
where he spends most of his time. But Raghu, why don't you also tell us the actual reasons why those nationwide protests broke out in the 1970s? Who caused all those food shortages? All those never-ending queues outside provision shops and nationalized banks, the pervasive rotten corruption at all levels, the police state that Bihar had become under the chief ministership of Jagannath Mishra and others, the constant communal riots that were unleashed in Gujarat by successive Congress governments. Why don't you tell the story of who was behind all this? And why don't you, Mr. Raghu, also tell us how deeply unpopular, how, hand, how high-handed and how dictatorial that Mrs. Indira Gandhi had become in the 1970s. Mr. Raghu Karnad, you really want us to believe in 2018 that students' body, that student bodies of those days across the country woke up one fine day and for no good reason. Maybe they didn't have their morning tea on that day. And so they decided, okay, let's launch some massive nationwide protest and bring down Mrs. Indira Gandhi's government. You really want us to believe that, Raghu Karnat, in 2018? And contrary to your fake claim, JP had maintained a huge distance with the RSS for at least three decades for the same reasons that you and your gang hates the RSS even today. But unlike your agenda peddling shop, namely The Wire, JP was a genuinely honest man. He was a patriot, he was a nationalist, he was a freedom fighter, and above all, he was a decent man. It was a scholar and historian named Sitaram Goel who actually bridged the gap between JP the patriot and the RSS, the nationalist and cultural organization par excellence. And after JP attended an RSS shaka at the insistence of Mr. Sitaram Goel, he remarked, and I am quoting JP, The RSS workers, they have a lot of young and disciplined workers. The workers are also highly educated. I never knew that. In a socialist movement, most of our workers are not even matriculates. I don't expect uh, you, Raghu Karna, to know all this, but just for the record. Right. Next, Raghu Karnad contends that there was a nationwide anarchy fomented by all these anti-Indira Gandhi protesters to bring down her government and that compared to that period, compared to those protests, there is no similar protest today against the Narendra Modi government. Raghu, there is a really simple answer to this. Mrs. Indira Gandhi is at the root of much of independent India's problems beginning with uh, the institutional corruption that she almost officialized, the political horse trading, pulling down governments, dismissing governments, a lazy and incompetent cor and corrupt bureaucracy, extortionist taxes, economic backwardness, poverty and perhaps the worst thing of all of completely or near completely destroying democratic institutions. And this, Raghu, is the precise history that you conceal. By contrast, Mr. Narendra Modi is perhaps the first ever popular Prime Minister with no dynastic backing, with no money bags, with no political prior political experience. He is the man, he is the leader who was also hounded by the descendants of the same Indira Gandhi and most importantly, he remains the proverbial Mr. Clean in politics. There are zero corruption charges against Mr. Narendra Modi. No matter how hard your Kirana shop called the wire tries indirectly by pushing and publishing hit jobs against Mr. Amit Shah. Given all these facts, why would any sane person want to bring down the government headed by such a popular leader as Mr. Modi? That's right. I am talking about millions of sane Indians who voted so overwhelmingly for Mr. Narendra Modi and the BJP in 2014 and for which crime you hate all these Indian voters. But then again, I am talking about millions of sane Indians and your name is Raghu Karnad. Next, 
Raghu claims that no political science textbooks or the general discourse teaches the history of protests in India. The last time we heard Raghu, Narendra Modi or Amit Shah or Arun Jaitley or Rajnath Singh or Nitin Gadkari or any other powerful BJP leaders were not busy preventing anyone from learning anything, let alone the history of protests in India. Mr. Raghu Karnad, here's the thing. The political science and the history textbooks and in general, the state of uh, literature in the humanities for the last 50 years, that's right, for the last 50 years, all these textbooks, political science textbooks have all been written by the ideological and intellectual and academic club members of Mr. Girish Karnad, your illustrious father. And now you are telling us that all of those textbooks are fake? If your answer is yes, then that is a welcome admission of your guilt, Mr. Raghu Karnad. And when Raghu Karnad talks in a phony tone, this is rich. Yeah? I mean, look at that. I mean, towards the end of his podcast or his whatever video, uh, Raghu Karna talks in a phony tone of total self-righteousness, you know, like he's feeling really proud of himself for coining a bizarre term called why not it seems, whatever the hell that means. Uh, I suppose it's a sort of a pathetic comeback to another weasel word, what about -ery? Both these terms, I don't know what the hell they mean. Like I said, uh, he is a privileged rich kid with lots of idle time on his hands, which, you know, helps him make all these videos, you know, richly, slickly produced videos that mean nothing. But, you know, in throughout this video, what is the one worst thing that stands out? Raghu Karnad, in this video, actually brushes aside the horrors of the emergency. No, actually, actually I'm wrong. Let me rephrase that or let me put it another way. Raghu Karnad actually defends the emergency on the grounds that an inconvenient high court judge dared to set aside Mrs. Indira Gandhi's election. So what does the poor lady do? She suspends democracy. She throws millions of innocent Indians in jail and her son runs riot on the streets, demolishing entire colonies and slums and castrating grown-up men, adult males among other unspeakable horrors. This is what Raghu Karnar casually defends in the face of historical recorded truths about the emergency. The only other media eminence who defended the emergency is the late Kushwan Singh. Indeed, if Sanjay Gandhi, Mrs. Indira Gandhi's son, if Sanjay Gandhi was still alive and if the Congress was still in power, there is no doubt that he would have appointed Raghu Karnad as the INB minister. That's right, Mr. Raghu Karnad is a privileged kid, but he is also a dangerous urban nexal. Thank you very much.